Welcome back to the Yokar TZ channel. Once again, it is Toby here presenting the new generation Mega Deck for Battle Spirits Japan. If you're here, I'm hoping that this will be the second video you watch related to the Mega Deck. Uh, first one you should have watched, hopefully, is the opening and the card, card by card. So what I'm going to go through here is similarly to the Evangelion deck profile. I'm going to run through my deck and then I'm going to kind of talk about the concept of the deck and then I'll kind of show the winning line and that's about it. I'm, I'm going to make it a bit shorter and sweeter for the newer players trying to get into the game with the mega deck. So without moment ado, let's begin. So starting us off, we're going to run two copies of the contract spirit, Jabot, and then we're going to run three copies of Burgoyle, three copies of Ultimate Seriyubi, two Gaia no Hoko, and one Evil Flame, just as a hoser. Three of our generic defensive in Burst Wall. Three of our, probably one of our most important early game pieces in the Nexus. We're gonna run three evil draws. This is our hand engine. This is our count engine. This is also our battle tricking. For some reason, it buffs 10,000. 10,000 is a lot. That jumps like many level thresholds. Then we've got three Kagero Seekers. I'm running two of this one. The Grey Chudo. Honestly, I just want it for its on summon. I'd rather a cheaper card to get onto the board to just do fulfill our reductions earlier. And then into our big dogs. Running three of the Demon Lord, Bram Zavag. Three of the Demon Lord, Magna Zappa. Three of the Demon Lord, Lord Javad. Check the secrets. Skipping into Nouvelle Vogue, which is our best, one of our better interruption options in the deck. And then finally, three of the main engine of the deck in Van Tus. So that's the deck profile. You might notice that my deck is very heavily early game oriented rather than trying to abuse the fact that Van Tus lets me summon ultimates for free. You guys will also notice that I don't run Oh, the czar. And that's because this card sucks. That And th that's it to it. Yes, it's a demon lord, but that's why you saw me run that extra copy of Javad. I would rather summon Javad. I think Javad does more than that blue ultimate. So I'm completely cutting that out. I think it's a brick. I don't think it's burst condition is good. And I don't think it's uh, core movement skill is good either to warrant playing it or warrant playing suboptimal burst. So you will notice that in this deck, everything should be Evil God traded except for Gaino Hoko and Seriyubi. Let's go to the deck explanation. So welcome to the deck explanation portion of the video. So you guys can see the deck fully laid out here. And I think what I'm going to start with is you can kind of see me subsection the deck into like the early game parts, the magic parts, the off engine parts. So like I said before, the only off engine we have in this deck is our Sarah Yubi and our burst walls. Aside from that, everything is on trait, so we should be gaining count pretty easily. Um, you see here in our Demon Lord package, 4444. Four, four, four. Luckily, Javad exists, so we have two purple demon lords and we can get rid of our blue one. Uh, and that's where our extra Javad comes in. Because with an extra Javad, we just increase the number of demon lords we have that can draw off their effects. Because Javad's count plus and draw only works when you move cores through a demon lord's effect. So one, two, three, four, five ways of moving cores off a of demon lord effects. And we're gonna try and maximize them I would like to find a spot for a third Javad for a triple pre-con, and I think this is how I would do it. So, Bram Zavag, even though its lockout effect is only once per game, it has a really strong secondary effect, and that is to prevent attack step ending. 
at the point of this video, the meta is very defined and some of the strongest defensive cards are attack step enders such as Burst Bowl, which actually is from hand. So you want to countermeasure for that. Yes, although you won't always be able to use its lockout and sometimes when it's summoned out, you don't want to use it then. That is A-OK -okay because it's double symbol. For some reason, it's double symbol. So definitely not something to scoff at there. Apart from that, Lord Jabbar and Jabbar, this is our draw engine. This in Soul State is a draw engine. This itself as a card that you advent is a draw engine. Also works when you summon it. So Bantu's opening Lord Javad gets Javad back onto the board. Or if you want to just summon it raw as a body. Uh, but the main game plan of this deck is to have always have Seriubi live. Seriubi is the power play of the deck. Bantu's is the power play of the deck. So between these two, these two green ultimates, which Seriubi requires, this is how you should be looking to close out games. This is our draw engine, and this is our board to dial engine. This is our board setup. We have just an easy core ramp, fit hand fixer, core ramp, draw, evil draw will be our draw, and our nexus, which also helps us ramp up our deck. So ideally, like, the pace that you want to be playing at is turn one, Nexus or Burgoyle. Turn two, Javad, swing with the Burgoyle, use its second effect to rip two cores and gain a core itself, which will increase Javad's count to one. And then our Nexus also increases our count. Then Javad effect, flash, burn another core off to count plus two, draw one. And between these three, if you can keep this momentum going in like the first two turns, you're very set to looking towards like finishing on like turn four or five onwards. Because once you get enough cores, hard sledding of Vantus, if you have a Seriubi in hand, means that this Vantus is pretty much free. Because you hard slam the Vantus, you gain the two cores back on its attack, you summon your three Demon Lords or however many Demon Lords you find out, and a Seriubi in hand, which is why we play three copies of it, because we can't grab it back with uh, Evil Draw, means that you're able to recycle all those cores back onto your board. Which means this Bantus was effectively free. You now have five bodies, which usually just counts up adds to five. And you can usually go for a game that way. Uh, if you can find Brahms Attack off of that, you know that your opponent cannot end the attack step unless they remove the attacking unit and combine it with an attack step ender. And besides being able to bounce on the block, being able to remove on the block and then chain it to a flash timing Artemic Shield or a Burst Wall, hard to do. Some decks just do not have the ability to do that. But that's pretty much the discussion of the deck. From a, th from a three pre-con constructed deck, I think this is probably one of the best lists you can come up with. Uh, there's arguments to move these three cards over. But apart from everything else, I think everything else is solid. You can have an argument to cut Kagro Seeker, but the fact that Kagro Seeker is a green ultimate is one extra card that keeps Seriubi alive. And like I said, this is our main game plan. Let's go ahead into the test hand showcase to kind of show you how to play the deck and how to win with the deck. So for this showcase, I really just want to show you what I meant by the early game movement. So let's say that we went first and we have our Nexus. Let's go ahead and deploy that. And our opponent can like either pass here or swing. Um, let's say that they're generous, they're also playing a contract deck. And many of the contract spirits nowadays require two swing to gain the count. So we're gonna go ahead and gift ourselves a core from the life. Uh, with this, we're ready. So we're gonna go core step, draw step, refresh step. And with our one reduction, we're going to play Burgoyle from hand to cost on summon effect, gain a core onto this ultimate. Then now that we have two ultimate reduction, we can summon Jabad. Now, we're going to go ahead and move this core over to the Burgoyle. The reason for that is we want to get it to the level 4 ultimate, so when it swings, like we do now, we use its effect. We move two cores from it to the trash and gain one core from the void. On, And then when our ultimate, when our ultimate attacks, 
we gain a count. So no count area yet. So I'm just gonna mark it with this die here, but we are now at count one. You can treat count one as like generation break one for all you Vanguard players. Uh, but basically as your count increases, you unlock more things. You'll see stuff like over count, which means once you reach that count, you gain that extra power buff. Because we attacked with an evil God, our count increases by one. Then once we turn, we can either draw one or gain a core. I'm going to choose to gain a core onto that ultimate. Now, we're back at 7k, so we can dodge some lower BP destruction skill. Let's not forget that after our Burgoyle moved cores off of it, Javad will be able to increase its count to 3 now, which gets it to overcount 2 and makes it 9k on the board. So we now have 7k, 9k, hard to remove with like low costed uh, BP removal magic. Then on our flash timing, we can use Javad's flash effect which is to pay one core to the trash, then we can shoot two. Now, this isn't a by doing so effect, so we can pay the cost and have the effect resolve without effect. Then, because we moved a core off of an evil god, we gain two count, and because it was because of a demon lord, we get to draw one. So this is the kind of pattern you want to be able to do uh, to be able to just get into the process of being able to really, really start to farm hand. There's also a way where you can, instead of getting the count here, you can actually choose to leave Burgo at this point if you didn't want the extra two. Like in, in a case of damage denial, what you would do is you would swing, choose to actually just get the draw here, you gain the count, and on the flash timing, you use Javad to self-deplete to gain another count and draw. This way, though you don't get as many cores, you will be able to self-deplete the Burgoyle, which prevents your opponent from getting a bonus core to play with if they choose to take it from the life. And so this part of the showcase will just be showing you what the deck aims to do. So. Like how in EVA, I talked about counting to five, the way that this deck counts to five is death by a million cuts. You, if you saw on the deck profile, we didn't really have a finisher finisher. Our finisher was just being able to use Vantus to spawn a gigantic board, which would have five symbols on the board. Uh, you'd have like Brahm Safak to lock them out of attack step ending, and you would have Seriubi to be able to bump everything up levels to make sure that they break through your opponent's board. But apart from that, there's like no real big like unblockable five simple attacker or burn for five that Terra at fives would be able to do. So I want to show you how you can try and make five damage in a turn with this. So about like turns five and six, you can actually kind of expect to have about 12 counts, maybe even more, depending on how good your deck was. Let's go ahead and banish some cards as well. Just mill out, simulate that we've been playing a bit. And we're about in soul state. Maybe it got removed from our opponent because Javad by itself is just not that big. It's only 12k. I'm kidding. That's actually still really big. <laughs> but yeah. So we have our two ultimate symbols on the board and nothing other. Our hand, to be completely honest, is not exactly looking the best. But we have Vantus. And we have Seriyubi. And we also have Gainohoko. So between those two and like a bonus guy in a Hoko if you have it, you should be able to make game with this. In fact, you might also argue it's a good thing that you need to pay a bit extra for the Van 2s out. So we have two ultimate symbols onto the board. So it's going to cost me five to play Van 2s. So five cores to the trash. We're going to summon Van 2s. One thing you can do is when you summon this ultimate, you can summon Gainohoko from hand. However, what I like to do is I want to see what I summon off of this first. And then based on what I summon off of that, I can choose where to put the Gainohoko. For example, maybe my Vantu is attacking and my opponent's board is big, in which case it's time to direct to Brave it after everything else is summoned. Or maybe I see a Brahms of Fog come out. In which case, I want a triple symbol attacker, which is I want to move my Gainohoko there. Uh, being able to kind of maneuver where to put your Gainohoko is very important. So, I think 
It's going to be a pretty simple turn this turn. I'm going to go ahead and move everything here. And we are going to attack with Von Toos. On attack effect, we're going to stack a card from hand on top of our deck. Uh, we are going to put Brahms the Fag on top. Because this is what we definitely want on top. Uh, we want to guarantee that we at least find a Brahms of Fog for the summon, so we're going to stack it on top. Then we're going to gain two cards from the Void, and this turn our opponent cannot activate the effect of Burst. Uh, I think one of the cool things you can know about this is that if you leave Vantus at level 1 when you summon it, and then on its attack effect you gain the two cores to become level 4, level 3, level 4, um, ultimate start at level 3 and then they jump up 4, 5, 6. But yeah, so you start at level 3, then you jump to level 4 with the two extra cores. You actually unlock the next effect at the same timing. So then we're going to be able to use the effect. We're going to be able to pay one from the void to open up to the count that we have. Now, what we can do as well is on that attack, both of our nexus go off. And we can gain two count and then also gain a core to that opponent. Then, we're gonna open 14, up to 14. At this point, uh, you declare how much you want, so you wanna be able to make sure you don't deck out. You usually get about two to two Vantu users per, per game, so you should be able to go through maximum. And if you don't win at that time, something's amiss. But let's go ahead and just open 10 here. We should be able to find some things there. So, off the 10, I know that we have a Brahms of Hog. So we're going to have that as one of our targets. I see another Bram Zafag and I see Magna Zapper. And the rest, I will banish. So we'll go ahead and banish these. I'm uh, going to go ahead and maintain them. I want to maintain the Bram Zafag to at least level 4. So I'm going to move 3 cores here. Uh, these ones can be level 1 and that's A-OK. -okay. Then, Javad and the Soul State happens. Because our Demon Lord moved a core from another location, we get to count plus two, draw one. We can use Brahms of Fags on Summon Effect, destroy all of our opponent's spirits, we can burn ourselves to the void, and we lock our opponent from being able to summon spirits. So things like Burst, things like uh, Flash summons out, our opponent can't do that anymore. Then, because our Demon Lord made our core move, our count plus two, we draw one. Then we destroy our opponent's spirits again, and then on summon, count ultimate trigger. Once per turn, we perform count ultimate trigger. So what that is, is our opponent mills the top card of their deck, so we can just mill one of ours instead for the purpose of the video. If the cost of that card is less than our count, which is 18, and uh, there's no cards that's cost 18, uh, there's a cost 20, Omazio, but Hard to find those, we usually hit, we're going to be able to course you two to our opponent's trash. And because of our core movement due to our Demon Lord, our count plus two, we draw one card. Now, based on all of those draws, like, we already knew that we have a Seriubi in hand. We should be able to find a Seriubi if we didn't have one. Uh, but at the same time that we summoned all of these, I can now choose where do I want my guy in a Hoko. So let's say that I'm actually in fear of losing the battle. And if I lose the battle, I'm not currently attacking anymore. Or maybe they have a card that says destroy a 20k or less. I'm going to go ahead and slap this onto the Vantus to make sure it's at 25. Which means that it's able to stay on the board, is able to continue the attack, and that way our opponent can't end the attack step as long as we're attacking. Now, onto our opponent's flash timing. If they don't have anything, that's where we are going to be able to contract Advent into Lord Javad from Soul State. So, a few things happen off now. Because of the Advent ability moving a core off of our board to the trash, it belonged to a Demon Lord, count plus one, draw one. Then, on Advent effect, we're going to discard one, draw two, and because we discarded an evil god, we get to course you two. If that is successful, because this is a demon god effect, count plus two, draw one. Now, the reason why we wanted to do that is because we wanted to get five cores in our trash. And this lets us 
Sarah Yubi. So Sarah Yubi is going to be able to redistribute the cores. I'm going to bump this back up to level four. I'm going to bump this Brahm of Zafa to level four, and I'm going to just go ahead and split these like so. Hell, I can even be a bit saucy with this one and move this back to level one. Uh, because this one says during either place attack step, if I was to lose life, and I did lose life from Bromsafog, I would be able to summon a uh, cost 24 or less ultimate from hand. So, if I just so maybe left that at level 1 at the time I lost life to Bromsafog, I can just, you know, I summon another one and just, you know, have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 symbols on board to go for game. And, and that's just generally how you go for game with this deck. You... The more times you resolve band twos, the more times your opponent needs to have a defensive to stop your turn. If they don't have a defensive to stop your turn, you can just accidentally win right then and there. And like, that's one of the things that people need to know about Battle Spears is that it is high octane. Like, your goal as a defending player is to make your opponent say end step. Your goal as an attacking player is to deal five damage immediately. So, I think one thing to kind of just learn at Battle Spirits, as you're starting is throw caution to the wind. Limit test yourself. See how many variations, especially with this deck, which has like that random aspect of being able to open from the top to like choose what to summon to try and win with, right? Try and figure out how many ways you could try and make lethal. Like one of the things that I recently learned from Charlie, Card Dream, who I baited into Battle Spirits is that you can just keep fucking going with this because on attack, end of battle, you gain the soul core back, refresh, and you attack again. And at this time, with your soul core back, you can just re-app into another copy of itself. Get its draw. Get more draws because of all this, like, um, Demon Lord's core movement effects. Then at the end of this battle, get the core back, refresh. So this, like, if you can just keep looping into Lord Javad's, this is also a way to make five symbols by accident. But I digress. I hope that this video will help you learn how to play your mega deck. Take my list as an example, build towards it how you feel. For example, maybe you don't like the random one of Evil Flame. When I was in something, I I, I hate myself in Battle Spirits. If you bought your third pre-con, go ahead and turn this into third Javad. It's probably better than this. I only have this as a hoser to deal with all the other <laughs> mega decks floating around that I'll probably be dealing with. Apart from that, let me know what you guys thought about the video. Let me know how I can improve on these kind of deck profiles for the future. This was a bit shorter and sweeter because I wanted to do this as a three-parter. This was the triple pre-constructed version of the uh, of the deck that I wanted to make. And in the next video, you guys will see, will be my fully constructed with cards from outside of the deck. And I will teach you basically how to play that version of the deck, which uses things like soul driving to get multiple lockouts um in my envisioned version of the deck you skip your opponent's turn three times so if that intrigues you definitely keep a lookout for that and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching this has been toku from the old card tcg toku out